Diego Guillen with Legacy FA. It's the first time I'm saying that. Le yeah, Legacy FA, Legacy Fighting Alliance. And guess who we have here beside us? We got Steven Ocho Peterson. Uh, he's headlining the first Legacy Fighting Alliance event. It's going to be January 13th at the Bond Factory. This, this is one of those, uh, how would you say, history making moments. But yeah, and that's what, to a certain extent, you know, you seem to be in these, you know, these moments. This is what you work for. So, you know, how are you looking? You know, how do you feel? And, uh, you know, about two weeks out. Man, I just feel it's an honor for Legacy to, you know, put me as the front runner. Uh, this will be the first uh, RFA or the first merger title fight. And, uh, you know, so I plan on becoming the first LFA champ ever. And, uh, you know, it's an honor, but I, I feel like I've earned this spot. I've, uh, you know, I've, I've worked my way to the top. I had some setbacks, fell from grace, and then, you know, started from the bottom and worked my way back up again and uh, got back into the main event spots, won the belt, and here I am. Uh, you know, I'm here for a reason. I work hard. I sell the tickets. I, you know, put the fans in the seats that otherwise wouldn't be mixed martial arts fans. And uh, I bring a lot of fans to the sport, so I feel like, you know, just a little bit uh, coming back to me. Definitely, definitely. And uh, we'll talk just a little bit about Legacy 61. Um, for all that don't know, you know, there was that issue with the weigh-in. Uh, we won't get too much in the depth about that, but I did want to talk to you a little bit about that weight cut. You know, was was that was that something, you know, or what, what were the things that maybe people didn't read in the in the papers? You know, what, when, if they were there, like, what, what occurred there? Yeah, um, I'm not big about excuses, but... Uh, you know, there's a reason for everything, and uh, you know, I had trouble making the weight. I, I was sick about two weeks out from the fight, and uh, you know, just couldn't get better. Uh, I had some infections going on, and just couldn't couldn't heal, and uh, it made the weight cut miserable. And uh, at the uh, original, at the the first weigh-ins, I had uh, you know called ahead and told like to see I was behind, and I wasn't gonna actually make the weight on the first attempt, and I was gonna have to go upstairs and. Uh, you know, uh, cut the rest of the weight. Um, so I got it done and, and made it happen. Uh, there, so there was some uh, confusion about the scale. The scale was moved. Uh, yeah, a but bit of but the that. the scale was recalibrated once it was moved. And uh, you know, there's really no excuse. Uh, you know, I, I made weight and showed up, and I was ready to fight. Well, most definitely, most definitely. So, um, I, I've seen, you know, talked to a lot of people on the MMA world. They said, you know, when they see you fighting like, at 380, or what exactly is that? You're for 380? Cross Street 380. Cross 380, yeah. yeah. Um, they see, you know, they say that you, you're looking really good. So, how do you feel? Like, in, in your own words, how do you feel going into this one? I've never been better, man. I'm, I'm, my cardio's on point, my weight's on point, uh, I'm healthy. No injuries to speak of, thank God, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, keep this going through the next uh, week and a half, and you know, show up and take care of business on the 13th. Definitely, we we spoke a little bit about uh, about you and your fights. You know, they don't seem to ever give you a guy that seems to be well. He's a pretty good fighter. They seem to give you the beast, the, you know, the creme de creme. And you know, yeah. we will, he's another one where he's a talented guy. He fought on the uh, the Ultimate Fighter Brazil. Uh, what do you know about him, and what do you what do you expect? Man, he's a tough opponent. He's 16 and two. Uh, from the beginning of my career, I always wanted to fight the best. I never asked for no uh, no easy fights. Uh, never tiptoed around it. I always went, I went straight into the into the gauntlet and uh, fought the best I could. So you know, I, I just got what I asked for. And uh, you know, there's no you can't take a step back. If you have a loss, then you can you know reevaluate, take a step back, and uh, you know fight a lesser uh, talented opponent. But I'm winning all my fights. They're going to keep throwing me to these tough opponents, and I'm going to keep taking care of business until I get that call up to the UFC. You gotcha. Then we're here at Fort Seven May. Uh, it's it's a state of the art facility. Talk a little bit about like what you do here. You know, as far as your training, uh, did, did you train people? I saw you like teaching people. Yeah, uh, we just opened up uh, beginning of December. Um, yeah, uh, coach teamed up with Darren Williams uh, and. Top-notch facility. This is like a like a fighter's playhouse. It's, it's, it's like, like a it's dream like a, yeah. facility. I mean, uh, bottom bottom level, we got mats, bags. Uh, we got a, a cage room with wall pads. Uh, top level, we got weights, uh, cardio equipment. Outdoors, we have uh, turf, and upstairs is a little nice lounge area for the uh, for the fighters. So um, it's a real nice area. I teach kickboxing classes and I teach one-on-one uh, -on -one lessons here so uh, you know just trying to uh, live out the dream and uh, 
and keep getting better. And, and the facility, the energy in the building is like no other. Uh, there, there's no way you can train here and not get better. Definitely, definitely. Steven Ocho Peterson, he's going to be headlining. LFA won. You don't want to miss this, but I think every time you see a new I say that. You definitely don't want to miss this. This is history of the making. LFA won January 13th with Steven Ocho Peterson.